leaking. Oh, sorry. Linkage. It's got buffalo sauce. Oh God. Damn it. Oh, Some fuck. cut wires right there. Holy cow, dude. Vamanos. Oh, top secret. What's up guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Juan, what was your question, dude? Is this the last vlog for the bike? Are we done with it? It's not the last vlog for the bike, but I would hope that this is the last like official day of working on it. I do see that there's some leaks already that I'm not happy oh, with. That's true, we're not <laughs> doing that today. But we're not gonna do that today. I think it's still rideable. Let's go in there. Let's go figure out what we gotta get done and get this bike dialed in. Let's go check it out. The bike has been sitting on this lift a week now. We were at a trade show all weekend and we haven't really had opportunity to ride it or work on it. And we come back and there's oil leaking from the primary somewhere. I have a feeling that it's coming from the inner primary seal. The bike's level, so the oil level is higher on the inner primary and it's causing it to pour out that side. That's a bummer and we'll have to dig into that another day. It's still totally rideable. So, rusty old bars, dump those. I hate these metal grips, especially when they're not secured right. I throttle, because it still sticks, and switch the risers, update the top clamp, refresh it. I want to go with chrome. I like chrome, I think we have uh, all chrome on the FXR, it looks sick. Chrome coming up the fork, chrome risers, chrome bars. Delete the turn signals, swap the pegs out, swap the rear pegs out. Pegs, rear pegs, linkage, shifter tip, shift arm. These stock linkages, this connection right here, they're known to fail. And it sucks being on the road when that fails and then you're trying to kick that or shift your bike with that to, to get home or to get to your next location. These are really hard to adjust. You have to take this off. What we're gonna throw on is much easier to adjust. Blown out this one is already. I think we do those changes between the new saddleman seat that we did, the Makuni carb, the exhaust, which made the bike run night and day better. I think we're riding this thing, enjoying the hell out of it. Maybe fix that leak at the primary and it's ready to roll. All right, get the roller cart. Oh, dude, don't hit my bike. How long do you think this is gonna take? Like a riser swap would be 15 minutes, but the bars are internally wired. We don't know what who's done what to this bike in the 22 years of existence. I'm crossing my fingers that we don't run into any unknowns. You're one bolt, broken bolt away from a three day job. Yeah, four hours I'm giving it. Oh God, have, have you guys looked at it at all? Once you're at 130. Yeah, yeah. all right, see? He's at least got more confidence. You know where stuff is. Chrome mid bend bars. We need chrome eight inch straight OG risers. I know where the throttle tubes and the grips are. So basically we need to do the whole foot control setup. Black shifter tip, chrome shift arm, chrome linkage. Remember that? You got that list in your head? I got that. All right. I think to be fun, let's throw some gray ones on it. Got some gray cheese. Yeah. Look at that. Throttle tube. Throttle tube. All right. Black shifter tip. Okay. Black P54s. Cool. All right, we'll leave the cart here. We'll just start working on the bike. Cool. Cool. Luis has got a 05. Dude. Chrome mags, dual disc with the Brembo Harley brakes. He did the Chrome low rider. 9.5s. Homeboy went out with the Italian Brembos. I'll start with the pegs, you start with the riser. <laughs> and we'll see who finishes first. It's not that bad of a deal. How fast can we get the bike torn apart? All right, that's it, we'll set a timer. Right. The hardest part will be unwiring the, the bars. Brother, you're working on the bike and we haven't even done a timestamp. I get straight to business, homie. You're over right. there lollygagging. It's 9.50. See how fast we can tear this thing apart. Gas tank covers on. What do we got? Got some chromate straights. Nice. Some chrome mid bends. Nice. The ARP foot peg hardware. Sweet. The ARP bolts for the gauge relocation. Sweet. Grips, a shifter tip in black, chrome shift linkage. That should be the P54 slims for the rear. The P54s for the front. Yep. Chrome shift on. Sweet. Contrast cut perch clamps. Thank you, sir. Look at the rear peg right there, bro. <laughs> What's up with that? It's got buffalo sauce on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. The risers have the thing where the cables go through it. So that means we can't even get the bars off of the risers until the cables are figured out. Damn it. We know we're gonna delete that, so let's just unbolt this. So that way these can get away from the handlebars for a second. I'm already hungry for some tacos right now. Clinker's off. We're almost there, buddy. Come on, Gabe. All right, Gabe didn't answer, so we're going in. 
with the knowledge we have on this. It's definitely stuck on something. I feel like if I pull too hard, yeah, you're gonna mess it's like you're up. gonna blow something out. Nah. So we have given up trying to pull the wires and we are now going to remove the fender. We know that these wires are really the wires that go up to the handlebars and they're just kind of like all back here. We got to figure out if there's a zip tie behind this or if it's just pinched between something. Figure out this area to be able to, I think, pull the wires through. And this is the headache that I was worried about. I think if we get the fender out, it's going to give us a lot more room to see and work around. All right, so while Juan's working on the fender, I started taking the throttle tube assembly apart so we can get this done quicker. And so one thing that I don't like about billet throttle tubes, I don't know if this is coming up, but you can see the silver wear where the cable rolls on both sides. And so that's kind of why I've always liked running a plastic throttle tube because plastic rubbing up against the throttle cable is not going to cause a wear like that and it will be a lot more slippery to the cables themselves and even more slippery. I mean, it's slippery, but it, there's still, it's metal on metal versus plastic on metal is always gonna be more slippery, in my opinion. How's the extension? Oh, oh my. I'm Larry, bro. What do you got, dog? I'm taking that metal bolt in there off. I'm trying to keep this paint nice. <laughs> Easy. There you go, you got it? I'm passing got it to you. You have a better look. We gotta push these wires up. I mean, there's definitely a lot. That's definitely, yeah, see all that was supposed to be up here, but... I mean, someone did a good job doing yeah, the bars. Yeah, 100%. There you go. Okay. Is that your intestines, bro? That's what I said. This thing <laughs> looked like it had freaking intestines. You I could... pull, you push. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Oh, oh there's some my. cut wires right there. These are the blinkers, which we're not even using, so... No, we can cut them. Sorry. Yeah, all right, watch. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So if your theory's right, you should be able to pull this off. Technically, I mean, it's gonna be tight in these bars. Good okay. still. One of them is good. <laughs> All right, blinkers, we were never gonna use them again anyway, so. This one goes to the light. It's got some old tape on it. And then, of course, we have still two more that need to come out. I don't know what they go to. There it is. Looks like it broke the clip. That's why somebody taped it. Uh, one, two, three, you see that? Make sure you can see them. So now Juan is deep pinning it. It's pretty easy. You just gotta press that little flip in there and if you can see it. Harley did get wiser on the newer bikes. Early model Dyna has these, these bigger Deutsch connectors. The new Dynas have little ones that fit through bars. So it's sweet. On the new bikes, you usually don't need to take them apart like this. So it's usually a faster, easier process. But even if you do, I know it seems, it sounds scary, but it's not to take these yeah. apart. The big but, ones come apart easy. But why'd you cut these two wires? These are not our bars, and we have gotten calls before. Back in the day, we used to also expose the neural, but what we found is they rust, and sometimes the rust can actually show. Even if you paint over the neural, when the top clamp bites it, it still bites the neural, and then that way, if there's any bit showing outside of a riser, it doesn't get rusty like this. A lot of you have asked before, oh, why, don't, why do you paint over your neural? Well, that's why. And so we still neural the bar, We've never had an issue doing our wheelies and stuff with the bar coming loose or something like that, as long as your top clamp's torqued. All right. All right, almost there. Yeah, sometimes it's just easier to do what seems a little bit harder, take the fender off right away. That way you get access to everything. And so we're an hour into the project. Foot controls are all off. The bars are gonna be off in a second. And then we're gonna basically start by rewiring our, our bars, putting the Deutsch connectors back together, kind of bolting it back up. This was a scary, or the unknown for me, so it's like in promising. All right, so two hours, bro. It's, it's 10.45. I'm saying we're having lunch at that like one o'clock time that I said when we started this shit. But I'm hungry now. Holy cow, dude. These are heavy. These have to be like 10 pounds. Let's 10 go pounds. weigh them. So yeah, I was hungry. All right, shoot up, boy. Both with hardware, both with top clamp. What do you think the difference is? Half. I would say this is half the weight. I'd say that's eight and that's four. It goes to five, let's see. So two pounds, 11 ounces, four, four pounds, pounds, seven ounces. Almost so half. pound and a half heavier. But when you're feeling them like this, it's significantly different. 
And our risers are made out of 6061 aluminum. They're triple nickel chrome. And then we use stainless steel ARP hardware where the risers we're taking off are made of mild steel. That's why they're rusting. You can see where the paint was chipping and it's rusting. 40% heavier, some standard crusty bolts. Looks like he did use good and tight bushings. You could see the old ones have already been compressed where they're already like blown out. You know, let's just put fresh ones in. And then while we're putting fresh ones in for security, fresh bolts versus the old ones. Again, who knows, these could be 20 years old. Put some blue Loctite in this BZ. Ooh. Ooh. Homie, what's up, Dan? All right. First time I've seen your hand dirty. Whoa, Wait, what is that? there's no seat on it, so I'm not like. We do it three quarter so, you see it? Tough guy shit. Big tough guy. We're running our chrome mid bend bars, one of my favorite bends, but they are cut for throttle by wire. If you have a cable throttle bike, we do sell a plug that you can put in there to equal the bars out. You see, because throttle by wire has a half inch of electrical coming out. So basically to make them even, this side of the bar is a half inch wider. Ruler if you have to in a Sharpie, but you can scratch the chrome a little bit. That's about a half inch. And if you don't have a pipe cutter, these are pretty affordable at any hardware store. This is something I used to do even on my motocross bikes and you know, it's not odd to cut bars down to the width that you like. In fact, most motocross bars come extra wide and so you can cut off and set them where you want. There it is. Picture's coming in handy. Your turn signal is gonna put the starter. <laughs> 11.50, so now we're two hours into the project. We are rewiring the bars, but Juan and I were already like getting hungry. We're like, what's for, what's for lunch? Should we grab tacos? We're trying to think of what we're gonna get. I'm kind of feeling a sandwich, like a nice oh, cold. Like Dan's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm down we, for Dan's. We haven't been to Dan's since like vlog like two or three, like last year this time. Dan's Super Subs has been there as long as I can remember. And um, they do this technique where they like steam the meat and the bread at the same time in like this little like ch -ch steamer thing. And it makes the whole roll and the and the bread warm. Hopefully everything's right. I don't wanna be broken down the side of the road waiting for our food. Yeah, right. I'll just get the bolts on. I like the bar angle to be similar to the fork angle. It's a little bit this way. It's a little forward. Yeah. Something like that. I'm gonna snug it. I'm not gonna go like full bore. Is it centered? Make sure that. It looks centered. What does it look like from there? Male connector right here. And then, unfortunately, female, you guys can see it deep in there. It's in the frame. Interesting. I can barely get my finger in there. Yeah. We got to outsmart this thing. Needle nose in there? I don't think. What if we just cut the neck of the frame off? Yeah, make a little. He's holding it. I got it to go in. Ready? Go. Is I that think, it? I think so. All right. Let's try the horn. The horn works. Yep. Yep. Okay, ready? Okay. okay. One, two, three, four, five switches that we really need to work work. I would say we pull all the wiring back while the fender's off. This hardware, we sell separately. It's spacers and longer ARP. So that's what I'm taking out lengthwise, this one. That's the one we're putting in. So that way we'll be able to run the gauge up on top of the bars, which will look sweet. Just like that, so. Oh shit, they like. They got that little shoe, the little brake for the cruise for the control. cruise control. Oh, there's no cruise control screw. In this random junk drawer of of perch clamps and shifters and bushings and random spacers. I was like, I've seen this. I've seen it. Wait. But it has to have this little clip. Uh -huh. So that you can't let me see. You can't back right. it out to where it falls out. On this. Yep, see a little hole? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Does it work? Yep. This bike will have cruise control again. Another upgrade. Guys, meet Luis. He's behind the camera. Say what's up. How's it going? Luis How's it going? does a lot of the parts assembly at the shop, help ship, get products in and out the door. And uh, he has a, I want to say you got an 05. The one we showed DL. earlier. That's right. Yeah, we showed it earlier. He's been dialing it in. It's actually lunchtime right now. It's like 12.45. He's on his lunch. He's over here hanging out with us. Juan goes, how come the FXR has spacers? 
because we've been work we worked on the FXR before. And the FXR has spacers because I wanted my risers to be that tall. Or on the FXR, the wires go in the headlight. And so instead of having to extend my wires, I just you lifted live. the light oh, off an inch. Oh god. <laughs> there's a will, there's a way, Juan. Keep it pinched. So the clip's in, we're good to go. Now I can continue putting the throttle tube on. Little shoe. How funny is that? Some great engineering. You tape, you zip tie and tape, and it looks great. But the problem is that when I put the throttle on and where the kit, where this is, we can't even get the it over all the way. You didn't give yourself I, enough the, slack. The wire is too. It might. It's probably too long over there, dude. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> no, that's it. So we have the choice of of re or skinning this or cutting. The, you just cut an inch off the bar, so it won't matter. Yeah, it's two shorter bars. But I'm gonna cut another half inch off both sides. This bike's gonna be the lane splitter, city ripper. I kinda want it tight. Got the fender on, I just need to tighten these four. I'm gonna ride my FXR, you ride your Dyna. So okay, when we get back, we'll cut the bars, finish kinda buttoning it all up, put grips on it, foot controls, hopefully it's sweet. 11, 12, one, we're three hours in. So we're three hours in, we'll finish it in four. Well, well let's go eat, said. let's go eat. Didn't I say four? No, you said two. Oh. Shit. I'm saying one hour to finish the bike from the from after we get back from lunch. No, wait, look, we gotta do all the controls. We're gonna fix the throttle because it's getting sticky. We need to do uh, all the pegs, shift arm linkage, and everything up there. At least two hours. Okay. I'm being realistic. Like all right, two hours calmly. An yeah. hour we could get it done. Oh, lunch time. Yeah. Lunch time. I was hungry. We'll get some food. Vamanos! Turkey roast beef. Ham, turkey, bacon, and cheese. All right, so check it out. She's gonna drop it in there. It's gonna be amazing. Onions. The bread is super soft and warm. Some renderings for the bike. That's it, homie. That food was bomb. Dan Super Subs on Ventura Boulevard, established 1980. So 20 years longer, or 10 years longer than I've been born. that sandwich on like a oh, again yeah. against cavaretta's honestly that was my favorite one i like the bread it's really soft it yeah. was warm bacon was bomb but these are valley locals cavaretta's or dan super subs but dan super subs has got this technique how they warm the bread i showed you guys that is different nobody else does that and it's bomb if you're ever in the valley go get it 250 i said four o'clock all right we let's like, see no. putting a half inch off both sides again even though i already cut an inch off this side two inches skinnier than we normally send them out as Cars in black Jeez. no pegs and new pegs we got the left side basically buttoned up i need to put the grip on this but we want to make sure right now it's a little sticky one's got the shifter tip going the linkage installed so look at how easy that is to adjust look at me spinning right there and figuring out on my foot 
All right, so I lifted the tank and I noticed the, the cables were zip tied to the frame, which I don't hate, but as soon as I released that zip tie right there, it let this have a less sharp corner out of the Makuni. And now it's working. Grips are on, bars, risers, and then, and then I'll sit on it. We'll make sure the bars are straight. All right, homie, we finished up 2.45. So hour, 15 minutes, doing one more extra credit thing. But it's almost four o'clock. Let's go back to uh, the offices and watch the new vlog. It's not even live yet, dude. It's the, it's the you haven't even I'm, put the page up. I'm just, oh, whoa, top secret. Been waiting a week for this. I've been re-watching past vlogs to keep me entertained. Let's go. I think so. Vlog was great. Yeah, let's roll this thing out and Let's give a, let's check it out outside. Here it comes. The tail light. What's I, tell, up? I tell you what, brother, is the easiest wheeling bike of all the lineup. Yeah. I don't know if it's the tire, the soft suspension. Honestly, the engine being like underpowered, I oh. give it, I give it everything it has. It hooks up and it just comes up. If I give my FXR everything it has, it spins. Yeah. Same with my Dyna. Like they have a hundred plus horsepower and they just spin. This thing's probably working off 42 horsepower. <laughs> On wow. the edge, brother. Well, look, I, the fender's good but you got the tail light. Just for you guys that know, I didn't want to do that. So I was purposely <laughs> trying to do a wheelie like right at that 11 o'clock point. So we know how close I can get. And that's, see right where it was is where it felt good, where I was like off the throttle and was just like Ugh. I heard it. I was like and I was like, oh, is that fender or light? And you just kissed the light. I like this Ben bar. There's a little bit more sweep than the bar that was on it. We cut down almost two inches of the bar in width. So I I'm really comfortable on this bar. This was our original bar bend, and this is what I'm still rocking on all of our bikes. Risers are good. I mean, they're very similar, but the gauges are like this now. So they're like more peripheral, like you see them like when I'm riding. So that looks super sick. Cockpit improved. The, the foot controls feel way grippier, much more planted than what was on there. You haven't even ridden the bike yet. <laughs> Tomorrow or the next day, we're gonna go for a rip on these two Dynas and we can go back and forth. You can give your comparisons, but those comparisons, those, those changes are night and day. The reason why we designed these parts, like you immediately feel the benefits of throwing these parts on. So many benefits, you're gonna love riding this thing. Pull your bike up, let's check them out side by side. Early model Dyna, late model Dyna, both black, both with stock engines and just minor upgrades. Way better, yeah, you're, so gonna, you're gonna dig trying to wheelie this thing next yeah. time we go out for a day. Um, yeah, it's looking freaking sick, I'm excited to ride it. Yeah, so this is a early model Dyna, late model Dyna, they made these, uh, I don't know the exact date, but twin cam ones were like 99. I uh, don't quote me and I'm not trying to act like I'm, I know it all, but it's like 99 era. I'll, late I'll, 90s. Yeah, late nineties. I'll figure out the exact year on our next vlog. Late nineties on these Dynas. And then these started in 06 where they came with the 39 or the 49 millimeter fork. And then there was some like changes between them when the fuel injection came on and stuff like that. Yeah. But sick to have this in the stable. Owen's bike needs mags. Sun's going down, but we're gonna spend a day riding these things, going and grab some tacos on the next vlog. 
thank you guys for checking this out and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. See you later. <laughs>